Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip. And I'm Mihaela from World Travel Bug. Hey, welcome to our second episode of this epic road trip of the Southwest. So come along with us and let us show you around. We are now at Red Rock and this was not planned whatsoever but we were actually really happy to find this place because we've been just driving around literally everything was closed where we went so and we found ourselves in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico we didn't know what to do we we're so far away from everything and he almost wanted to go home yeah. because I, I don't know we just hit a moment of very 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 low and then I just searched around and we found two nice places we thought okay let's see this and then we're gonna plan further and then we found this place yeah. and it's actually not only is not bad at all it's free <laughs> <laughs> so we had water electricity and everything it's quite full there are other camper vans here and look at it it's such a beautiful place and we're gonna go to a very famous spot in we are in Gallup right now we're gonna go to a very famous hotel after this so we had plans to go to Santa Fe and to go down to White Sands and some other national parks mm -hmm. and monuments and it just um, you know with the coronavirus going on everything is shut down so yesterday we mentioned we had to make a detour and that detour was to Moab, Utah. <laughs> One of my favorite places here in the southwest. So what do you think so far? I am amazed. Again, I'm speechless and I'm happy that we had to take this detour. So it's, it's one of the most surreal places I have ever seen in my life. I keep saying that I don't know where we are on Mars or on some other planet. I just cannot explain you how surreal this looks to me. Well, and earlier she was saying, you know, beauty just doesn't do this place justice. Yeah. Like there has to be, you know, magnificent or some better adjective to describe Moab area. Uh, we're actually on Highway 128, which I think is one of the most scenic highways in the entire country. And it, it's just, you can see just these red rock monoliths everywhere. Huge canyons, you drive down and you're like right next to the canyon wall. Yeah, at some point it's just closing in and you're like, you, you feel like going like this yeah. in the car and then it just opens up and yeah. you see everything. And the river is, uh, the Colorado River runs right through here, carving out its, uh, its path, so. It's, it's peaceful. It's actually really, really peaceful here. Yeah, so to, last night we camped out here in Moab. I think we're gonna head toward Canyonlands, uh, Escalante and Bryce Canyon, Zion. Uh, so this detour is definitely in Miha's favor. <laughs> I wanted to really explore more of uh, southern New Mexico, which I had not done before. Uh, but since everything was closed, the nice thing about Moab uh, and this area in southern Utah is that even if the parks are closed, it is so scenic. Open nature. Yeah, so worth coming. So you may have noticed we've been doing this road trip in a Cruise America RV, which has been pretty darn nice. Oh, it has been. It's my first time in an RV doing a road trip like this. It, it has been amazing. I was just telling him that you go out, take a photo, and then you go there, you have your own toilet, carrying it with you all the time. I feel like we are two snails carrying our home with yeah. us everywhere. 
it's so comfortable and then you are in the middle of nature popping up your wine having it looking at this majestuosity i don't know how to call it anymore it's it is very very comfortable and enough room for for both of us plenty oh, yeah. plenty of room and you know what's so nice is every morning i make a nice breakfast maybe some eggs or oatmeal uh we've been uh stocked up the refrigerator and freezer work incredibly yeah. well uh, so we have uh, all fresh fruit fresh vegetables things like that to cook nice meals while we're yeah. out here and the propane gas lasted it still lasts for a long time yep we um, got heat uh, which we don't really need air conditioning but it does have that as well yeah we need the heat in the morning yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah hot shower it, it, boy, it was perfect yeah. it was perfect I'm, I'm gonna be really sad when we say goodbye to our home yeah yeah well we still have like five more days so I know it's getting closer. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things Moab is so famous for is the sandstone arches. What a different perspective it is <laughs> from right here in the middle of the arch, no? Yeah, <laughs> my knees are still shaking a little bit because if you look down, it looks it's quite steep. Pretty steep. So we found a really cool place to camp tonight, to boondock. Uh, we're about a half an hour uh, east of Capitol Reef, where we're gonna go tomorrow. But if you look at this, this stuff just flakes off. It's like it rained mud on these boulders. It's crazy. What do you think of our camp spot? I think it's pretty damn unique. Yeah, like we did. You can see professional. these. Professional, that's professional. Yes. Big boulders we rolled down from the hill and we use this rock because actually the wind is coming this way. So I think it'll work out really well tonight. I was waiting in the undertow Set a drift with featherweight light like bones Unaware of where my heart would flow I was waiting in the undertow Can't touch the bottom Sit into a tumble Waves that shake me out out of my skin Never been so easy Losing my direction My bearings have me south of home But I've been wrong before I was waiting in the undertow Set a drift with fed away like bones Unaware of where my heart would flow I was waiting in the undertow
Bryce Canyon. And it's a glorious day. Look at the sky, the light. Daddy had left the shore. We made it to the end of the road here at Bryce Canyon. It might be the highest point. It's a rainbow point, and I think it's got to be over 9,000 feet. So much snow. Yeah, 9,115 feet. And it is chilly. I should absolutely be having a jacket on. And it's so windy, too. Miha went up here to get some pictures already. Freezing. It is freezing oh up here. We gotta get back. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> and he says you cannot catch a cold from being cold. I don't believe it. <laughs> we have to come up with some new adjectives because the scenery is just so spectacular yeah it's surreal it's like we we really feel like we're we are on another planet and i think we were like one planet is uh the capital reef another planet rice canyon yeah. another planet was moab it's just oh my god yeah we've yeah. done we've been driving interstellar or something yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good word for it yeah yeah, so then uh, last night uh, we camped out at KOA uh, and it was in Cannonville, is that the town? Yeah, Cannonville. And it was, it's right in between Bryce Canyon and Escalante, so it's a great location. Really beautiful campground. About 11 miles, I think, from Bryce? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not far. And so today we have spent the day here at Bryce, which has about, been about my fourth time here, but I hadn't driven all the way to the, the very end, to the rainbow, rainbow point. And wasn't I it cool when we hiked down a little bit and we yeah. get in between those spires and everything? Yeah, yeah, it's just incredible. So now we're gonna be leaving the park, Bryce Canyon, and we're going to head west on scenic byway 12 and i've been on this stretch before and it is incredible so you're in <laughs> for a tree i mean if it if the scenery hasn't been incredible enough it's going to continue no but yesterday we were like when there were some clouds you we were thinking oh yes and the scenery was like for two miles just some trees and so on and we were happy we could put some miles behind us because it was scenic yeah. view, scenic point scenic point scenic point it, it took us a couple hours to go like 20 miles. Oh my God, yeah. we were stopping not every two minutes, every 30 seconds. <laughs> it seemed like, yeah. God. So our next uh, destination plan, we're gonna hit the Vermilion Cliffs, uh, Page, uh, Lake Powell area. Wow. So those are our next uh, few days. <gasps> so yeah, you're in for even more spectacular scenery. So. I really feel very, very spoiled by what I've seen. I, I don't think many people or definitely not many Romanians probably have seen what I've seen and probably not even from the US, you know, yeah. to do such an expensive road trip to the Southwest. Now you understand why I get frustrated when I talk to foreigners and ask them if they've ever been to the United States. Yeah. And if they say yes, invariably the only places <laughs> they've been is New York or LA or maybe San yeah. Francisco or Seattle. Well, the Southwest, this is an area that is unlike any other in the world. And it is really a remarkable part of the country. I fully agree. Hoodoo. Hoodoo Trail number 301. That's what this is, is a, is a hoodoo. Well, it has 
been a long day of driving and I am beat. But we found a really nice place to camp tonight. And you probably hear the generator running because we're boondocking and we're gonna cook <laughs> the most expensive frozen pizza I've ever purchased. I think it was about $12. We got it with us all the way from Moab. <laughs> yeah. And Miha has been dying to have it, and tonight seems like a good night. So we've uh, the nice thing about this Cruise America RV is it has a convection oven in the microwave. So we're gonna bake this bad boy and uh, have just a nice simple evening. So these beautiful Vermilion Cliffs behind me were named by John Wesley Powell and he and his team were the very first to explore the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. And then subsequently the Glen Canyon Dam was built and Lake Powell was created and named for John Wesley Powell. I'm out of my way. So right off 89A, we have the Vermilion Cliffs right behind us, but this is also a really interesting attraction. This is called the Cliff Dwellers, and a lot of people would think that these are maybe built by uh, Native Americans, mm -hmm. but this is actually a fascinating story, and I don't know it exactly, but in the 1920s, I believe it was, there was a woman who came here, and she was a famous dancer, and she, I think, was having trouble in her marriage, and so she decided to go on this epic road trip, and she saw this beautiful area here and uh, decided to call it home. So she built these little cliff dwellers oh. And um, I think she actually had rooms to rent and things for oh, tourists. Really? Yeah. It's actually a pretty decent size. So right now we are at Lee's Ferry, which is at the very end of Marble Canyon. Mm -hmm. And we're just south of the Glen Canyon Dam that holds back uh, Lake Powell. And I guess in some ways, this is the beginning of the Colorado River because this is where all the rafters go through the Grand Canyon. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And it's a very unusual sight because you don't see any rafters here. Usually this is full of rafters preparing for a three, five, maybe a week or two week long trip down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. The water is so clear. Yeah, yeah, it really is right now because it's coming from underneath the dam. And, but as it goes through and all these tributaries uh -huh. feed into the Colorado, you'll find it gets very dirty or murky. Just east of the Lee's Ferry Turnoff is the Marble Canyon Bridge, I think also known as Navajo Bridge. And man, it is really a beautiful view of the Colorado River. And also, we just saw some baby condors, which is pretty special. So 
So our next stop, we're just outside of Page, Arizona, and we're going to see one of the most recognizable sites in all of Arizona. Something Miha has been dying to see. Horseshoe Bend. <laughs> <laughs> and this came like such a surprise earlier because I had no idea we were coming here. I thought we were just going to park at Lake Powell. Lake Powell. Paige, God, I combined them. I'm too excited. Our feet were fashioned around. Tears in your eyes? I got tears in my eyes when I got there, so I feel myself crying. Aww. Guys, I've got tears in my eyes. <laughs> Look at this. It's too much beauty. I cannot believe I'm I'm here and there is nobody else around. God, I keep I got so emotional. <laughs> I know it's stupid, but look at this. It's I, quite extraordinary, huh? Oh my god. And I thought I have seen the most amazing sights. As much as we've traveled, there's still so much to see. Yeah, I'm still a bit sniffly right now. We're not made to be How wavy, how beautiful they are. So right now, we are approaching the Glen Canyon Dam Overlook. Oh, okay. yeah. wow, look at this. I know, it's actually a really cool little walk down here. The sandstone formations and everything are wow. incredible. Look. Look at oh, this is actually nice. Well, we made it to Lake Powell. Unfortunately, it's kind of dead here and there's no place to camp. It, everything's closed. But gosh, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. The pink and the blue are a wonderful combination. I mentioned earlier this lake is named for Wesley Powell. He is the first person and his expedition to go down the Colorado River. And this is just a spectacular place for boating, um, skiing, any water activity you can think of. This is our last night boondocking and we are very close to Lake Powell actually and Lone Rock, but we are very close to Mangiri Resort. That's right. As well, it's a really exclusive place. I mean, look around us how exclusive this yeah, is. Yeah, it's actually right on the other side of that bluff. One of the most exclusive resorts in the world. But we are pretty happy with our exclusivity. Yeah. Right? It's not too bad. No one around us. Great view. We are Amazing just waiting for view. the sunset and going to have an aperitif again. So we do have one more day of this trip, but we're going to be actually, the last night we'll be in Flagstaff, Arizona at a uh, KOA, uh, just so we can kind of clean up the RV before we return it. Yeah. Winterland, tell me all your secrets, fill me in. So we were just there, you know, talking, giggling, whatever, cooking, and then I look outside and I see a big thing, the moon. And shakes the So we're about on the overpass just outside of Page or just before you get to Page and there was such a beautiful view and then we looked across the street and there's just really some cool hiking opportunities as well. There's more than one way to skin a cat as they say or in this case get down to the waterfall level. When you head for your trip right out of this wicked black and into bright wow. sand Straight towards the warm sun and into his hands
<laughs> the explorer in me never dies. So we were driving towards Flagstaff and I thought, okay, this is it. I had the most epic trip. And then we stop here, the painted desert. Look around us. He didn't tell me anything whatsoever about this. Look. Yeah, we're uh, a little bit north of Flagstaff, a little bit south of Page, a little bit west of Tuba City, and it is spectacular. Oh my god. I've never seen anything like this. Even the clouds are pink here. So a lot of people think the Painted Desert is just part of the National Park area, but it actually encompasses a large swath of land that comes all the way to Highway 89 to the west. So right now we're just in the outskirts of uh, Flagstaff and I really wanted to show you around like uh, right now where we're at is a place called Sunset Crater and many many years ago I don't know how many but there was a massive volcanic eruption so that's why you see all this black soil it's it's kind of like uh, black sand and then not too far from here is Wapaki which is a great uh, old uh, Native American ruin and so there's a lot of really cool things here I wanted to show you, but unfortunately, like so many things, it's closed. It's been a pretty fantastic couple of weeks, huh? I know, and I think it had if it had been a month, I would still feel the same. Yeah, probably. It was such an epic trip. We've seen amazing places in our home. Yeah. It's just perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice to be able to drive around and not have to search for a bathroom and <laughs> not have to search for a hotel. <laughs> Everything is self-contained. It's yeah, pretty cool. tell me about it. So I have to ask you, <laughs> I asked you about halfway or so through the trip what your favorite uh, place had been so far. So now we're nearing the end. If you can only name one place, oh. like what is the one that stands out the most? One, huh? I have to run them all through my head. <laughs> there is one where I cried. Wow. I must have been filming. <laughs> so, yeah, you were in there. So I think I will pick that one, but it's very, um, almost at the same place with the second one. And I'll tell you the second one as well. So I'm picking <laughs> drums. Horseshoe Bend. Ah, one of the most iconic places in Arizona. And usually I don't pick iconic places, Some sometimes probably just because I don't want to. But it was not just how beautiful it looked, but how it made me feel mm -hmm. there. It, I just had a perfect moment of serenity looking at the most spectacular beauty of nature. And it was pretty cool when we just kind of sat back and relaxed right on the rim. And, and actually because there was this C virus thing going around, there were only like at the most a half a dozen people and at the least it was just you and me yeah yeah it was I, pretty amazing to to experience yeah. that just I, I was going to say i think this is what made it even more special but i it's not that i mean it, it's, it's really the beauty of nature and that was literally the cherry on top yeah and boy isn't the southwest just a special gem yeah it is yeah. i believed you when you say said so before but now <laughs> I know what you mean, really. Yeah. You wanna see? You wanna hear, hear my second place? Yes, please tell me. Do you have any idea? I think, if I had to guess, I would say maybe Canyon de Chez or Escalante. No, uh, Capitol Reef. Damn it! <laughs> Yeah. Capital I, Reef, okay. I don't know. There was something about this place. And if, yeah. There's just so many places in the Southwest 
Um, so being from Romania, I assume you would highly encourage people to come here to the Southwest? Yeah, I, I would definitely. It's the nature here is spectacular. I've traveled a lot yeah, in my life uh, for fun and for work and for many other things. And I've seen a lot in the world, but here I have to say, it's pretty unique. There are mm -hmm. pretty, pretty unique places that I have never seen anywhere else on this planet. Yeah. Say goodbye. Well, thank you all so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed these uh, videos. And if so, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more road trip travel videos. So until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the road. road.